Uh, and thanks to you at home for joining us this hour. Happy Friday. Um, earlier this week, the Deputy Attorney General of the United States, Rod Rosenstein, made headlines when he gave a talk in D.C. Um, and after his talk, he answered questions from reporters. A CNN reporter named Laura Jarrett asked Mr. Rosenstein about Republicans in Congress coming after him and, and trying to gin up support for impeaching him and removing him from office. And, and in response to that question, Rosenstein gave the strongest public comments he has yet made, um, pushing back against the kind of pressure that he's been under. Thanks so much for doing this, uh, Mr. Deputy Attorney General. As you think about the importance of separation of powers uh, on Law Day here, any reaction to the news that certain members of the House Freedom Caucus have talked about drafting up articles of impeachment <laughs> despite your best efforts to comply yeah. with their document requests? Yeah, they, they can't even resist leaking their own drafts. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I Would you care that, to elaborate um, on that? I, I saw that draft. I mean, I don't know who wrote it. I can tell you, you know, there have been people who have been uh, uh, making threats privately and publicly uh, against me uh, for quite some time. And I think they should understand by now the Department of Justice is not going to be extorted. We're going to do what's required by the rule of law. And uh, any kind of threats that anybody makes uh, are not going to affect the way we do our job. We have a responsibility, and we take an oath. That's the whole point. Everybody in the department takes that oath. We have 115,000 employees, and if they violate it, they know they're going to be held accountable, uh, and I know those folks know that I'm not going to violate my oath. As Deputy Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein is essentially the uh, COO, the Chief Operating Officer of the whole Justice Department. Uh, the Attorney General is the head of the Justice Department, right, the, 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 technically and, and in terms of the title. But when it comes to who really runs the place on a day-to-day -day basis, it's the Deputy Attorney General. It always is. Uh, even still, Deputy Attorney Generals are usually not that high profile. They're kind of the workhorse, not the show horse. The reason Rod Rosenstein is really high profile is because Attorney General Jeff Sessions is recused from overseeing any investigations that touch on the 2016 presidential campaign. And that means that Rod Rosenstein, Deputy Attorney General, he's the guy who oversees any such investigation. He's the one who appointed Robert Mueller to be special counsel to investigate the Russia scandal. He's the one who oversees the ongoing Mueller investigation. That's why Rod Rosenstein is famous. That's why he's come under such pressure from the president, from the administration broadly, from conservative media, and especially from Trump supporting Republican members of Congress. And, and that's who he was talking to in that remarkable appearance earlier this week when he said the Department of Justice is not going to be extorted. I am not going to violate my oath. Yeah, you can threaten to impeach me, do whatever you need to do. I am not going to violate my oath. And you're not going to extort me. Like, right. I mean, and you, could, and you could tell from watching him speak that, that Rosenstein is dry, I guess is the right word. Like, he's a serious guy. Looks like he parts his hair with a water pick, right? Like, he is straight arrow. Um, but, but at that event earlier this week that, that's been getting so much attention, I should also tell you that in addition to the Justice Department will not be extorted, I will not violate my oath stuff, uh, there was also one genuinely funny moment. So I think it's partly about culture, partly about structure, and partly about the rights enshrined in the Constitution. If you would permit me, and I hope you will, I'd like to take a liberty. Um, I'd like to hand you a piece of paper with some words on it. It's not a subpoena, is it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. He's stealing my thunder. <laughs> It was not, in fact, a subpoena, although there was a moment when it actually looked like he might be legitimately afraid, not just funny afraid, that it might be a subpoena. Uh, but here's what happened next, um, it, in which we got a clear and surprising little window into what's really going on inside Rod Rosenstein as he is facing all of this pressure, as the president of the United States seems more and more obviously to be gearing up to try to fire him or to otherwise push him out as a way of shutting down Mueller's investigation. Watch, this is what happened next. He's stealing my thunder, <laughs> but I'm happy to give it to you. So I'd like to hand you um, a piece of paper with the words um, of a famous American. I'd like you to just take a look at it, uh, and then if you'd be so kind to read it slowly and aloud to the audience. Um, here you go. Well, this is Robert Jackson. 
Says, uh, and Robert Jackson was the Attorney General of the United States uh, uh, in the Roosevelt administration. His portrait also hangs in the Deputy Attorney General's conference room. And he gave a speech in the Great Hall of the Department of Justice, April 1st of 1940. And uh, he spoke about the role of the federal prosecutor. And uh, it really is, uh, for federal prosecutors, it really is a guidebook. Even now, many decades later, uh, really stands as the, the most significant articulation of the principles that govern uh, prosecutors. And this particular excerpt reads the qualities... If I may, if I, forgive me. I did not give him the name or he, he said right. April 1st, 1940. I mean, this is right from the top. So um, I just wanted to make sure we credit yes. you for that. Well, it is one of my favorite and, quotes. Yes, sir. Uh, and I, I encourage you to read the whole thing. But this is actually the concluding paragraph. It says, the qualities of good prosecutor are as elusive and as impossible to define as those which mark a gentleman. And you should read or woman. Uh, and those who need to be told would not understand it anyway. A sensitiveness to fair play and sportsmanship is perhaps the best protection against the abuse of power. And the citizen's safety lies in the prosecutor who tempers zeal with kindness, who seeks truth and not victims, who serves the law and not factional purposes, and who approaches his task with humility. I didn't even need to give it to you. Probably not. So there's this moment. Rod Rosenstein is reading a quote from 1940 from a speech given by the then Attorney General of the United States, who was Robert Jackson. It's kind of a weird moment, right? I mean, the guy who's interviewing Rosenstein appears to have just given him the quote, not the name of the person who wrote it or the circumstances under which those remarks were delivered. But Rosenstein recognizes it, starts expounding on it, ad lib, who said it, the exact date on which the guy said it, what job he had when he gave those remarks, the building he was in when he gave these remarks, the room he was speaking in, how it has been received across history. He even knows at what point in that speech this quote is taken from. He's like, oh, this is the concluding paragraph. Hmm. Right? And he knows that off the top of his head. The reason Rod Rosenstein knew all that is because that was a quote from his hero. At the Department of Justice, like I said, the Deputy Attorney General is really important. Deputy Attorney General runs the place. As such, the Deputy Attorney General has a big swanky conference room of his or her own right outside his or her private office. Well, here's how Rod Rosenstein has decorated his own conference room at the Justice Department. He put up a gigantic portrait of this guy, Robert Jackson. Attorney General from FDR. So he actually put it up so that it's over his own shoulder when he's sitting at the head of the table at that conference table. So other people are meeting with him, looking down the table to where Rod Rosenstein sits. They will see Robert Jackson looming over Rod Rosenstein's right shoulder, watching over what Rod Rosenstein does. He put that portrait up there himself. That's his guy. Pride of place for Rosenstein. So Robert, this guy, Robert Jackson, he was a solicitor general under FDR, which means he argued Supreme Court cases for the federal government when FDR was president. He was apparently very good at it. I think he argued like almost 40 cases before the Supreme Court. He lost less than a handful of them. Um, he was then attorney general in the lead up to the U.S. entering World War II. He was attorney general in 1940, 1941. Uh, he left being attorney general in 1941 because FDR appointed him to the Supreme Court, became a Supreme Court justice. Uh, in 1941, he was a, on the Supreme Court until he died in office in the 1950s. Uh, but interestingly, while he was on the court, he took some time off. Right? You never hear of a Supreme Court justice taking leave, but Robert Jackson did. He took leave as a justice of the Supreme Court in 1945 so he could go to Germany and be America's lead prosecutor in the Nuremberg trials. So a fascinating character in American legal history and somebody who ultimately ends up becoming Rod Rosenstein's legal hero, up to and including the handsome portrait of Robert Jackson that looms over Rosenstein's right shoulder in the conference room right outside his office every day. And when Rod Rosenstein on Tuesday of this week went to do that event in Washington, and somebody confronted him out of the blue with a quote from Robert Jackson, he knows it off the top of his head, he expounds on it at length, and that was the day, later on in those remarks, is when he went on to say, you know what, the Justice Department will not be extorted and I will not violate my oath. So that was a couple days ago. Now, check this out, Rosenstein Today. Um, you know, I know lots of cable news shows, like everybody talks about the same thing all day long. This is one of those nights when I'm talking about something that nobody else is talking about. I recognize that, but I think this is really, really important. I think a lot of stuff that people are talking about right now is deliberate noise that is designed to be enjoyable and obfuscate. Ob ob 
obscuring of what we ought to be actually looking at. This, I think, is the real deal. So Rosenstein today decided to do another public appearance. He doesn't have to do any of these, right? If you're the deputy attorney general, you have a lot on your plate. You're running the Justice Department. In his case, he's also overseeing the Russia investigation, which is a big deal right now. He's fending off live impeachment demands from Republican members of Congress and a deliberate strategy by the president to try to set him up for something so he can blame him for anything to justify firing him, right? There's all of this is going on in Rosenstein's life. And in the middle of that, Rod Rosenstein has made the decision to make these multiple public appearances this week. It was Tuesday in D.C. The Justice Department will not be extorted. Today, he decided he would attend the Montgomery County Bar Association annual meeting. Huh? I mean, no offense to Montgomery County's Bar Association, but this is not like the CNBC event of the century that no deputy attorney general could turn down. I mean, I think it's, it's safe to assume that Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, although he certainly has Maryland loyalties, I think he made these public remarks today because he wanted to make more public remarks today. And these remarks he made today were open to the press, and he put this all on the record. And so once again, he is, you know, he's Mr. Meticulous. He is, he is Mr. Super Dry. He is not exactly John Belushi, right? Um, but once again, he gives us one um, funny and also telling moment. Each year, the American Bar Association selects a theme for Law Day celebrations. This year's theme is one I particularly value, the separation of powers. <laughs> why is everybody laughing? He knows exactly why everybody is laughing. Because while he is running the Justice Department, We've got a president and a Republican Party in Congress that is hell-bent on firing him or impeaching him or removing him because they want to fire their way through the Justice Department in order to make the Russia investigation go away. And separation of powers is the only thing that stands in their way. And they know that. And they are very, very prepared to burn that down. And he is the guy on whom the heat is hottest. So he knows why his audience is laughing at this. Separation of powers, near and dear to my heart right now. But he also knows what he has come to say in this low profile but public on the record forum. And so for the second time in three days, A, we get Robert Jackson again from him, and B, we get a hard shove back against the president and Republicans in Congress who have been trying to monkey wrench the Russia investigation through him by pressuring the Justice Department, by pressuring Rosenstein in particular, by, by calling him names and calling for his head, but most recently and most presently now by demanding increasingly that Rosenstein has to hand over internal documents from the Mueller investigation that would show the White House what Mueller is up to, who he's targeting, how far he's gotten is in, in his investigation, what's he looking for. Right? That's the documentation they're trying to pry out of Rosenstein right now. And they're threatening to impeach him because he's saying no to that. In the midst of an ongoing criminal investigation, anybody who was potentially in trouble in that investigation would love to know what the prosecutors have, right? What they're looking for, who they're after, what they've got so far. That's why it's a bedrock rule of law enforcement and the Justice Department in particular that you don't hand that stuff over to anyone in the middle of an ongoing investigation. It would impair, impede, and potentially pervert the investigation. So that stuff is sacrosanct. You hold it internally. Nobody gets access. Not Congress, not the president, not the press, nobody. Ongoing law enforcement sensitive materials are kept within the prosecutor's purview only during ongoing investigations. You don't even need to go to law school to have that imbued in you as a law, rule of law American value, right? As soon as Monday of next week, Republicans in the House of Representatives may be mounting an effort to impeach Rod Rosenstein because he will not hand over to them internal documents from the Mueller investigation, which they presumably want to use to tip off the White House about what the Mueller investigation is doing. Well. In this quiet little out of the way, off the news cycle appearance today, Rod Rosenstein just said, no, he will not do that. And if you've got a problem with that, he says you can take it up with the ghost of Robert Jackson. It is a bedrock principle with very few exceptions that we do not discuss investigations. The department's longstanding practice of keeping information confidential has often been the source of disagreement with individual congressmen and sometimes with committees. In 1941, Congressman Carl Vinson wrote a letter to Attorney General Robert Jackson. He requested FBI and Department of Justice reports 
made in connection with an investigation of labor disputes involving Navy contracts. There was no doubt that Vincent's committee had a proper role to play in overseeing such issues, which is why he wanted the documents. But Attorney General Jackson flatly refused the request. He did not compromise at all. Jackson explained that disclosing investigative reports would harm the national interest in a number of different ways. When Attorney General Jackson responded to Congress in 1941, he referenced case law, statements by prior presidents, and letters from six attorneys general. Jackson explained that declining to open the FBI files to review by congressional members and staff is, and I quote, an unpleasant duty. He was right about that. <laughs> but it is in keeping with the separation of powers embodied in our constitutional system. Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein speaking today. I know there's, I know there's a lot of hangover news today about the fact that Rudy Giuliani is now President Trump's new lawyer, and he said a lot of cray, cray stuff two nights ago that seemed to implicate the president and all sorts of new stuff that the president was supposedly trying to avoid being implicated in, and now the president says Rudy didn't mean it, and he doesn't know, and Rudy put out a statement saying, I didn't mean it the way you thought I meant it. I meant it in a good way. And, uh, I know there has been a lot of hangover discussion today about exactly which particular lie was operative and whether the correction is a new lie or whether anything either of them has said on these matters is even purportedly true at this point, even on their own terms. I, right, right. I, it's. I understand why that discussion has continued into another day, and I know that it is kind of fun to have that discussion because those guys are incredible characters. But meanwhile, the actual existential threat to the Trump presidency isn't on cable news, it still derives from the federal criminal and counterintelligence investigation into the president and his campaign. I mean, the main event, the determinative fight for this president is right now, I think, in his own mind, coming down to whether the president has a way to dismantle that investigation. And the way he plainly wants to do that is by forcing out the guy who oversees it, by forcing out Rosenstein. And the way they're trying to force out Rosenstein is by backing Rosenstein up against a wall and trying to force him to hand over the goods, to show what Mueller's got, to pry open that investigation and hand over the materials that will show what Mueller's doing in real time and thereby queer his investigation. And in that main fight, the big fight, the front line, in this weird little conference room in Montgomery County, Maryland today, one of the two combatants in that fight, Rod Rosenstein, says, I won't do it. I will not hand over FBI internal documents from ongoing cases. That is a bedrock principle. I won't do it. And this is not a theoretical thing. First of all, Republicans in Congress really are demanding that he do, does that, and they say they're going to impeach him for not doing it. And second of all, ongoing cases, we've got. And a whole bunch of interesting stuff happened in all the ongoing cases today related to this investigation. Mueller's prosecutors today went to federal court in D.C. to get a continuance, basically an extension in their case against 13 Russian individuals and three Russian businesses, uh, which they brought felony charges against in mid-February. In today's filing, Mueller's prosecutors explained... Um, Shockingly, that they haven't been able to get those Russians to come to court in the United States yet. Quote, on the date the grand jury returned the indictment, the court issued summonses for the defendants to appear. The government has attempted service of the summonses by delivering copies of them to the office of the prosecutor general of Russia to be delivered to the defendants. That office, however, declined to accept the summonses. The government, meaning the U.S. government, has also submitted service requests to the Russian government pursuant to a mutual legal assistance treaty. But to our knowledge, quote, no further steps have been taken within Russia to effectuate service. So, yeah, it's one thing to have the special, special counsel's office bring felony charges against a whole bunch of Russians, including, you know, an individual Putin-connected oligarch in that case. It's one thing to bring those charges against Russians. It's another thing to get Russia to hand those people over to face trial. So today, we actually saw the special counsel's office in court arguing for an extension so they can try other ways to make that happen. That said, also today, we learned that when Russian oligarchs connected to Vladimir Putin do come to the United States, sometimes they get to meet the special counsel's prosecutors upon arrival 
as a surprise. Uh, the New York Times reports today that Viktor Vexelberg, one of the richest men in Russia, who was just hit with U.S. sanctions a couple of weeks ago, based in part on his proximity to Putin's government, he apparently visited the New York area by private plane a couple of months ago, whereupon, quote, federal agents working with Mr. Mueller stopped him and sought to search his electronic devices and questioned him. They confronted him after he stepped off a private plane. New reporting in the Times tonight on that. We don't know exactly why Victor Vexelberg was stopped and questioned by Mueller at a New York airport, nor do we know if they were successful in their effort to obtain and, and search his electronic devices when they confronted him. Uh, but the Times reports tonight that, that Vexelberg did attend the Trump inauguration, and maybe that's connected to why he was stopped. According to the Times, Vexelberg attended the inauguration along with another person who donated a quarter million dollars to Trump's inaugural fund. According to the Times tonight, Mueller's investigators have also questioned that Trump inaugural fund donor who brought this Russian oligarch to D.C. to see Trump sworn in. As the Times puts it tonight, quote, the interest in Vexelberg suggests that the special counsel has intensified its focus on potential connections between Russian oligarchs and the Trump campaign and inaugural committee. Also today, in the special counsel's ongoing prosecution of Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort, you might have heard there was a rip-roaring court hearing in that case uh, with a 77-year-old judge who is known for his enjoyable courtroom theatrics. That judge did not disappoint in terms of drama today. He gave Mueller's prosecutors a thorough going over, so much so that the president admiringly quoted the judge from the hearing transcript today and complimented him at a campaign-style speech that he gave today at the NRA. We'll be talking about that court hearing a little later on in the show because that rip-roaring hearing today um, did have a lot of drama in it, but the judge also did ask one really, really, really good question about the prosecution of Paul Manafort. It's a question that, as far as I know, nobody can answer, uh, and it has really big implications. So we'll get to that a little bit later on tonight. Um, but I just want to underscore that what Rod Rosenstein is is doing here. I recognize it's been a little bit off the radar, right? It was a Q&A at the museum in DC, and then he was him at this bar association meeting for, for their annual meeting for Law Day in Maryland. And I realize those things seem off the radar, right? But he really is doing something here. House Republicans who support Trump really are planning something, apparently for early next week, where they're going to try to bring impeachment proceedings against Rosenstein directly to the floor of the House without putting it through even the committee process or holding any hearings. The reason they're going to try this gambit, the reason they want to get rid of Rosenstein is because they think it's the way to get rid of the Mueller investigation. Well, <coughs> the way they are laying a predicate for doing this next week, for, for an impeachment effort against Rosenstein or a firing of him by the president, is that they are demanding that Rosenstein hand over materials about Mueller's ongoing investigation. And these are materials he can't hand over, and these are materials that he now insistently says he will not hand over. At the start of this week, Rosenstein formally rejected in writing these members of Congress's, this, this latest effort from these members of Congress to get the, the full scope of everyone and everything Mueller's been authorized to look at. The following day, there was Rosenstein in public saying the Justice Department will not be extorted. Then today, not to put too fine a point on it, he says, I'm not handing over FBI files from an, ongo from an ongoing investigation. Not going to do it. It is a bedrock principle with very few exceptions that we do not discuss investigations. Declining to open the FBI files to review by congressional members and staff is, and I quote, an unpleasant duty. But it is in keeping with the separation of powers embodied in our constitutional system. So this is a, this is a real fight. This is a real fight. The, he, he is, he is ta taking his stand here while the president and congressional Republicans are taking aim at him. This is his defense. We should notice that he is doing this in public. In terms of his offense, well, we saw that for the first time last night with this in the New York Times. Quote, a former federal law enforcement official familiar with the department's views says that Mr. Rosenstein and top FBI officials have come to suspect that some lawmakers are using their oversight authority to gain intelligence about the Mueller investigation so it can be shared with the White House. His defense is, you're not going to pressure me into monkey-wrenching this investigation. I'm not going to be extorted. I will not violate my oath. His offense is... And you know what? Your efforts to do that look suspiciously like you in Congress are using your powers as members of Congress to try to obstruct an ongoing FBI investigation. 
Now, has a member of Congress ever gotten busted for something that serious when it comes to an open law enforcement matter? I've learned not to make assumptions about these things. Hold that thought. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.